it's Miss Herrick here from iUniversity Prep, and today we are going to be talking about how do we write our expository essays. This is for uh, English 1 and English 1 Pre-AP. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's look at what is an expository essay. Basically, all an expository essay is is an essay that is going to explain or describe something. You might do this by comparing and contrasting, instructing, cause and effect, problem solution. But the basics of an expository essay is that you are explaining a topic or an event to somebody. So if you are sitting there right now and you're about to write your first expository essay for my class, um, start thinking about the prompt that you are going to choose and be thinking about how you are going to explain that topic. So let's look at an example here. Uh, this is what a star expository prompt looks like. So typically you're given a quote right here and then you're giving a think, you're given a think statement and then you're giving a write statement. And the write statement is what's most important on the page. You cannot write about this quote or this thing statement. All these are here to do is just kind of be a stimulus, stimulus for you and get your brain going. So if that's going to confuse you, you can literally just put a big X through this part and just circle your right because you're not allowed to put this quote in your essay and you're not allowed to write about this thing statement. So you may not even need to read them. Let's just focus right here on this right statement. So our right statement is write an essay explaining why teenagers are so dependent on technology. What a cool prompt. You should all have so much to say about this, right? You go to an online school, so you yourselves are very, very dependent upon technology. So let's look at how we get started. Your first step before writing any essay is going to be to brainstorm. And in our very first live lesson, uh, we made a list of topics that we know very well. And these are topics you might want to try to incorporate into your brainstorm to help you start thinking about the example that you are going to use in your essay. Uh, keep in mind, there is no wrong way to brainstorm as long as you just do it. Um, but you cannot just start writing your essay on your lined paper. If you do that, you are not going to end up with a very good essay. You need to make sure that you give yourself lots of time to plan. Um, and we're going to take a look at a couple of the ways to brainstorm. If you have a different way you like to brainstorm, that's totally fine. Like I said, there is absolutely no wrong way to brainstorm. So the first way you are probably familiar with is to make a bubble, bubble map. And with our bubble map, you just put your um, main topic here in the middle, and then you're going to branch ideas off of it. So if we're talking about technology, just branch the ideas that you think about technology. So it's how you go to school. It's how you go to work. Um, it's a status symbol for you, maybe. Having the new phone makes you seem cool. Whenever you go hang out with your friends and you whip out that iPhone X, they're like, ooh, I see you, right? Uh, for me, personally, my favorite is that it keeps me connected with my friends and family, and it eliminates those distance barriers, right? We can talk to somebody who's really far away, we can video chat with someone who's really far away, and it kind of feels like they're a little bit closer. Uh, technology just makes communication easier, right? It's faster, it's less stressful, you, you don't have to write a letter to somebody, you can just send them an email. I bet a lot of you haven't even ever wrote a letter in your whole life, right? That's because it's not as efficient anymore. Technology has just made it uh, a little bit irrelevant there. So that's your bubble map. Another option you can do is a brain dump. And with a brain dump, you just kind of write all your ideas out. They don't have to be very coherent. They don't have to make sense. You don't even have to use proper spelling, punctuation, grammar, or any of that. You're just getting all your ideas out of your head onto that paper. Um, so this works really well, especially if you have a lot to say about a topic and your brain is just kind of, you get the topic and you're like, oh, I have so much to say and you just need to get it all out onto that paper before you forget it. Um, so that's a really good way. My personal favorite is just to make a list. I see that I need to talk about why teenagers are dependent upon technology. And so I'm gonna make a list of why they're dependent, right? 
work, school, connected to friends, checking the news, it fills the time, it distracts them, social media, there's a ton of reasons. This list could go on and on and on. Um, so if you are trying to write your own essay right now, go ahead and pause the video right now and do your brainstorming for whatever your prompt is. So once you're done with brainstorming, you're going to move on to your thesis. Your thesis is the backbone of your essay. I'm sure you've heard that a thousand times. Um, and so the purpose of your thesis is to address or answer this right statement right here. So remember, we're not addressing this think statement and we really don't care about this quote or this information right here. Uh, you wanna be sure that you keep your thesis statement simple. You don't have to reinvent the wheel here um, your thesis just needs to be very obvious. It needs to be in a very obvious place. Um, and do not use I. Do not say I think teenagers are so dependent on technology because. Um, and don't use your specific examples yet. You want to save that for your body paragraphs. Um, so let's take a look at how we write that thesis statement. So one of the best ways to go about this is you take your write statement and you turn it into a question. So your write statement says, write an essay explaining why teenagers are so dependent on technology. So we're gonna go right here and we're gonna turn that into a question. Why are teenagers so dependent on technology? And then you're just going to answer that question in a complete sentence. So we can say teenagers are so dependent upon technology because it keeps them connected with their friends. And then that's it. That's your thesis. You have your thesis statement right there just by answering that question. Um, so if, if you are following along, trying to write your own prompt, go ahead, pause the video right here and turn your prompt into a question and then answer it. After you knock that thesis out, you're going to move on to your introduction. Your introduction is going to contain two pieces um, of the puzzle. And the first of those is a lead. And the lead is just how you start your essay. You know, that can be the hardest part for us whenever we're writing. You have all these ideas, but then you're like, how do I get started? Um, so on the next slide, we're going to take a look at some different types of leads we can use to get you started. And then right after that lead, you're going to put your thesis statement. And then that's your introduction. It's not a very long paragraph at all. Um, it, Three sentences is probably enough. You don't have a ton of room to write this essay, so you don't wanna spend a ton of time or um, space on your introduction because it's not the most important part. So let's look at some of these leads. So the first one we can try is called painting the scene. And what you do when you paint the scene is you talk about where your feet took you and what your eyes saw. So you're just kind of painting this picture of what's going on um, to start your essay. So let's look at what this would look like um, in our technology essay. So if I was gonna do a paint the scene intro, it might look something like this. I walked into class and noticed all of my friends with their heads down and their eyes glued to their iPhones. That is when I knew how desperately we are all addicted to our technology. You see how I painted a scene there in your head? you should have been able to kind of see all this happening, right? You walk into a class and you see all your friends and their heads are just down in their phones, right? I'm sure you guys have seen a scene like this all the time. You go to restaurants and you could just see people, their heads are down in their phones. Um, uh, and then after that lead, we're just going to go and we're gonna put our thesis in. Teenagers rely on technology to feel connected to their friends. Boom, that's an introduction paragraph. Let's look at our, if we wanted to do an imagine statement. What we're doing with imagine statements is we start the word or we start with the word imagine to get the reader's attention. So it might look something like this with our essay. Imagine you lost your phone for an entire weekend. How would you feel? Would you be panicked, isolated, shaky even? And then you could go into your thesis. Many teenagers would share these emotions because they rely on technology to feel connected to their friends. Um, so this is a really good way to start your essay, but one thing I want to point out is, yes, there are questions here, but we did not start with a question, and these questions weren't directly related to the prompt, right? You see how these questions don't relate to teenage dependency on technology at all? So it's okay that 
you have questions in there, but just make sure you're not just asking the question, why do teenagers depend on technology? Well, let me tell you, teenagers depend on technology because, yeah, you don't want to do that, okay? Um, so just keep that in mind with your questions. Be careful. And if you have any concerns about what you're doing, just let me know and I'll look over um, your paper for you, okay? This last lead that we're going to look at is a startling fact. And this is where you start your essay off by just saying a fact or a statistic that is a little shocking. Um, and one thing I want to point out here is that you can kind of make this statistic up. As long as it doesn't sound ridiculous, you're going to get away with it. Um, so for our technology essay, you might say 90 people or 90 percent of people sleep with their cell phones. This is an alarming statistic, but what is the reason why? For most teens, it is because their phone is their connection to friends, which they want to keep going even into the night. So I have no way of proving to you that this statistic is right, but it sounds pretty right. I mean, probably 90% of Americans probably sleep with their phone next to them. Um, that's just a thing we do. So as long as it's not a statistic that anybody's going to question, you can get away with just kind of making it up. I don't expect you to look up statistics or anything like that. Um, so once you do that, that's your introduction. Bam, just two or three sentences right there. So if you're following along, trying to write your own expository essay, go ahead, pause the video right here, and go back, look at those leads, and knock out your introduction. All right, step four is body paragraphs. This is by far the most important part of your essay. This is where all your ideas go. Um, so there are four parts to a body paragraph, and you need to make sure you have all four parts. This is very important. Um, so you start your body paragraph, so right after you write your introduction, the first sentence after that is called your topic sentence, and it's the first sentence of your body paragraph. And what this does is it introduces, it introduces your paragraph. What are you going to talk about? Ease your reader in. You don't want to just start rambling off facts and examples. You kind of want to have a nice, pretty introduction there, and that's what your topic sentence is. Right after your topic sentence, you're going to put your evidence or your example. And this is where you talk about this specific example that you have picked. Um, you don't explain it yet in your evidence. Um, you kind of want to be sure that those are a little bit separated. Whenever you are ready to explain your example and why your example proves your point, that's called your commentary. Um, and that explains why your example fits the prompt. You really need to be sure you spell it out for your reader. Um, just kind of pretend like they're maybe a little dumb and you have to spell it out for them. This is why this proves my point. Um, and then these are just your thoughts as well. So keep that in mind. You don't want to be saying I think here, but it is your opinion right here. Um, and then you end with a nice pretty concluding sentence. And what this does is it briefly sums everything you have just said um, up into one little sentence. It's like the bow on top of a present. You don't want to say all these awesome, cool things in your body paragraph and then just mic drop. You need to fade out slowly. I know mic drops are cool, but let's try to avoid them in our expository essays. You want to be sure that we're easing out. All right, so let's look at what body paragraphs might look like in our own technology prompt. So remember, topic sentence is the introduction of the idea. So my topic sentence would look something like this. Due to the progression of technology, such as cell phones and social media, teens have become dependent upon this technology to stay connected to their friends. So you see how that's kind of similar to my thesis statement, but it just becomes a little bit more specific than my thesis statement was, was because it starts to bring in my example. Um, and then our evidence here, this is really you expanding upon that example. In today's world, teens are able to access their social media 100% on their phones. It is here that teens are able to connect with their friends by posting photos, thoughts, and interacting with one another. Apps like Snapchat allow teenagers to rapidly post or send photos and videos. Their friends can view these posts to see what they are up to and respond with more photos or videos. Um, so I'm just explaining here. I'm just telling you about my evidence. I'm not going into very much detail about the prompt here yet. Um, I'm just explaining to you what my example is. 
it's this commentary, this super important commentary where you explain why that's relevant. Why is the example you have chosen um, appropriate for this essay? That's where you make that argument is right here. Um, so for this essay, I've said, the ability to see and hear one another provides an extra level of connectedness among teens. Technology allows teens the opportunity to feel relevant in the world around them. This is vital at this age because the teenage years are typically when people tend to feel the most alone. So that's really where I connect the dots for my reader. I explain why this technology is so important to the teenager, why they're so dependent. I use a lot of words here that, you know, are emotional words, right? It allows the opportunity to feel relevant, right? It's vital at this age. They can see and hear one another, which is a huge deal, right? Um, and then our concluding sentence is just that bow on top. It's how we kind of ease out of our body paragraph and how we're going to ease into our conclusion. So I ended this body paragraph by saying, technology provides a gateway for teens to reach out to their friends when they are in need. So you see how um, that concluding sentence just kind of summarizes everything I've said up here. Um, this doesn't have to be something super difficult, but just make sure it doesn't sound repetitive of anything else you've already said. Really try to mix up your words there. Um, and so once you've done that, that's your whole body paragraph. And that's really the biggest part of your essay. That's the most difficult part. Um, so go ahead, pause the video right here and work through your own body paragraph. Make sure that the length is similar to the length that I've put in here. Once you get that body paragraph knocked out, you're gonna go on to the easy part, which is the conclusion. This is easy because you've already done all the hard work. In your conclusion, you're gonna restate your thesis, but with a little bit of zest and a little bit of finesse. So what I mean by that is you just need to like spice up your thesis. You do not just wanna restate your thesis ex exactly the way you wrote it 20 lines ago, right? Because you want it to sound different. Um, so if we were gonna restate our thesis about connectedness, I might say technology, especially cell phones, are so important to teens because they keep us connected with one another. You see how I basically said the same idea, but I just used completely different words to get my point across. You need to do the same thing in your conclusion when you restate your thesis. So after you've done that, your very last sentence of your conclusion and the very last sentence of your whole essay is going to be a truism. And what a truism is, is something that is about all people in general. So it's like a general statement that you can apply to everybody. It may sound a little cliche or something like that, but it's a really great way to end these essays. Um, so one example here, cell phones may not be your best friend, but they can sure keep you connected to whoever is. Oh, how sweet, right? That's a really good note to leave your reader on. Um, so if you're struggling with truism, we have some more examples down here about what is and isn't a truism. So if I say, I have a friend named Taylor Swift, that is not a truism because it's not about everybody. Not everybody is lucky enough to have a friend named Taylor Swift. Only I am. Um, but if I say, kids need friends, that's about all people in general, right? You can apply that to any person. Uh, some more examples down here. Nobody gets along with everybody all the time, right? That's true. That happens all the time. Feeling connected makes friendships stronger. True, just general statement. Life can be complicated, but friends make it simple. Oh, how sweet. Also true and also a truism. Um, so I provided an alternate conclusion here for you to look at. So here's another example of me restating my same thesis. All in all, phones are a teenager's lifeline to their friends, keeping them feeling connected to what is going on. Then end with your truism right after that. While phones don't substitute a friendship, they can be the glue that keeps a friendship together. Ah, oh, so sweet. So if you are um, writing your essay, go ahead and let, start trying to knock that conclusion out. On this last slide right here, here's what your finished product looks like written on that star lined paper. So the first thing I want you to do is notice the size of my handwriting on this paper. It is pretty small. I'm not writing in that really big bubbly handwriting where I can only fit like 
five words on a line. There are a lot of words on this page. And if you are writing intentionally big just to fill up space, you are not going to end up getting a very good grade because you're not going to be able to get enough ideas out. Um, the next thing to notice is that it's legible. You can read this, right? Take a second, look at it. You can read all of these words. Um, also notice that it takes up the whole page. I do not have any extra lines down here. If I had extra lines down here, that would mean that I did not say enough. So you need to be sure you are filling up this whole page. Um, with that said, though, you do need to make sure that everything is within this bolded box. If you write outside of this bolded box, it will not get graded. And I don't mean that they, you know, they'll just choose not to read it. Whenever you take your star test, if you write outside the bolded box, it literally doesn't get seen because they just take a scan of your essay within that bolded box. So just make sure you keep everything within the box. Um, if you have any questions about your writing or, you know, just pieces of introduction, body paragraphs, conclusions, anything at all, please reach out to me. I am here to help and let me know if you have any questions. Happy writing, guys. Thank you.